first time in 25 years. The Hawks have soared to the top on the strong arm of Heisman candidate Chuck Long, who has returned for a fifth year and is Iowa's all-time leading passer. On the ground, the workhorse is All-America Ronnie Harmon. Back from a broken leg, Harmon is a slashing runner with a keen eye for the end zone. But it's not just the offense that has head coach Hayden Fry stoked up. For the Hawkeyes possess a dominating defense that is both opportunistic and hard-hitting. Yes, good news for the folks in Iowa. The bad news is over for a while because right now the Hawkeyes are number one. It was a county fair atmosphere here in Iowa City earlier this morning. The fans started arriving at 8 o'clock because it's never too early to celebrate when your favorite football team is ranked number one. And here comes the visitors, Michigan State. Their head coach, George Perlis. And now, the number one ranked football team in the land, with Coach Hayden Fry leading, along with quarterback Chuck Long, it is the Hawkeyes of Iowa. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brian Musburger, along with Eric Parsegan. The Hawkeyes, number one. Era, you're no stranger to that. Fifteen times you brought Northwestern and Notre Dame into games. You were ranked number one. What problems does that pose for Hayden Fry? Well, I think it's a tremendous honor for Hayden Fry, the team, the coaches, and everybody connected with Iowa. But also, it carries quite a burden for them because every team that they play the rest of the year is going to make Iowa a target. They're going to try to make their reputation by beating Iowa. But I think Hayden Fry has it in the proper perspective. He knows the most important poll is going to come at the end of the year. Great players on this Iowa team. You've seen Chuck Long and Ronnie Harmon, linebacker Larry Station. How about the Michigan State personnel? Well, Michigan State's going to have to come into this ball game without their starting quarterback, Dave Urema, for the third straight week. Bobby McAllister will start. He started the last two games. Hasn't been too productive. He's only had two touchdowns in those two ball games. But the coaching staff is really high on him. They think he's an outstanding prospect practice as well and they hope this afternoon that he'll blossom and give the Hawkeyes a real battle. Era looks like a mismatch on paper. It really does when you look at it uh, but one of the interesting comments that George Perlis made was that he's got to avoid losing this game. Sounds kind of negative but really what the situation is this. He cannot afford any high-risk plays in his own territory. No fumbles, no interceptions, no penalties of major consequence, a strong kicking game. He'd like very much to possession the football himself if he can to keep the ball away from a very strong Iowa offense. He did it a year ago. Can he do it this year? Let's take a look at it. All right, we're about to find out. The opening kickoff coming up. The number one ranked Hawkeyes of Iowa will take on the Spartans of Michigan State. Weather is going to be a factor because of the wind. Measured at 20 miles an hour, it has been gusting up to 25 here this afternoon. Era Michigan State won the flip and elected to defer, and you don't agree with that choice. I think I would have played to my strong suit, which is Michigan State's defense. I think I would rather give the ball to the Hawkeyes, let them work into the wind in the first quarter, and play for those breaks. They're going to their short suit. Their offense is not exactly productive, as we talked earlier. Well, Rob Houtland is teeing up the ball for the Hawkeyes. They will have that gusting wind at their back. Johnson, six yards deep, is coming out behind a wedge. Smacked down near the 16-yard line. Now let's take a look at the Michigan State attack. Bobby McAllister, six-foot, three-inch freshman, is the quarterback, and his fullback, whose father once was the captain at Notre Dame, and one of the best tailbacks in the country is Lorenzo White. Mark Ingram, they are going to try to throw to him today. Andre Risen is the other wide out, and Butch Roll out of Florida is the tight end. Here is first down for Michigan State. McAllister rolls to the right and completes a pass on first down to the tight end roll. Beautiful bootleg play, a good choice by George Perlis of the Spartans, and a good psychological move from McAllister because he has not had 
two great games in the games that he started against Notre Dame as well as Western Michigan last week. Era, are you surprised that they roll out right away, get a 19-yard gain, and put it up against the wind on first down? Looks like it was pretty well planned and scouted, doesn't it? White is set behind, takes the handoff, and the Hawkeyes were ready that time. Let's take a look at the Michigan State offensive line. He's 6'6", 269. Next to him, Rogers will go 6'3", 247. The center is 6'2", 238. Wojciechowski, perhaps their best lineman, 6'4", 246, and 6'4", 255. A big, experienced offensive line. Lorenzo White has carried this team, and he'll try again. White is smacked down at the line of scrimmage. Davis again, number 37. Boy, George Davis, number 37, really does it. Watch here. George Davis, the linebacker on the weak side, comes flying in right there, and he hits Lorenzo before he gets any kind of head of steam. Second and 10, and we'll see if McAllister elects to roll out again here. Craig Johnson has checked in. He's on a wing for Michigan State. He's coming around, and Iowa is ready. John Breeze, number 57, penetrated and brought him down for the loss. Now you wonder why Iowa is number one in the nation against the rush. They've only given 17.7 yards per game. There's a pretty good example of why. This era will be third and 14. Be a tough call. Ingram has it complete, but it is far short of the first down. Ken Sims, number nine, was the defensive back on the coverage for Hayden Fry. It's an 11 yard gain, and George Montgomery will have to punt now. Can't say enough about McAllister here. He's off to a roaring start. It bodes well for Michigan State in this football game because they can be a threat now. They've had no passing attack to speak of. They were last in the conference by at least 100 yards. And uh, that is really a tremendous start for McAllister, I think. Here is Greg Montgomery. And he possesses an extremely strong leg. One of the better punters in the nation. Billy Happer lets the ball bounce. It takes an Iowa bounce and is down there at the 21-yard line. So Chuck Long will come to work, and his backfield is extremely explosive. Long has suddenly propelled himself into the Heisman Trophy race. His fullback is primarily a blocker. His tailback is the game breaker, and he has two control-wide receivers who will fool you. They do not have blazing speed, but they catch everything that Long puts up. And Mike Flagg has replaced Jonathan Hayes, who went to the Kansas City Chiefs. We got a nice balance there. Here is Harmon. Looking for daylight at Shane Bulla. And the rest of that Hawkeye offense that will try to open the holes. Crosston is 6'5", 275. He's 6'3", 255. The center is the main man, 6'2", 255. He calls the blocking assignments. 6'3", 265, a converted tight end. And Haight, 6'4", 275, who will have his hands full today, taking on Kelly Quinn, the left defensive end, 93. Calling his plays at the line. Short drop, complete again. That one is to Halverson. And Keith Fisher was the cornerback. Definitely an aud audible by Long. We watched him on Thursday. He found the defensive cornerback back off. That was Sims, uh, or Crum, Crum, rather, back off number 35, and he just picked it right there, just a quick out. Second and two, and... The play is sent in from the Iowa sideline. Wide receivers generally are the messengers. This time they take Ronnie Harmon out, go to one running back, and it's the fullback. He stays in to protect. Long goes deep for the home run. It's Smith. He's got it at the 15. Touchdown, Iowa.
discussion. The Hawkeyes show you why they are ranked number one. Well, a beautiful job of sequencing on the part of the Hawkeyes. That time, Smith faked the out and went right up the sideline. He beat Keith Fisher. Rob Hultman adds the extra point. From the end zone, you'll see Long drop back into the pocket here. Smith goes out, fakes the out pattern. Fisher bites it, and Smith turns up the field. You can see he has about a three-step lead on him. Long drops the ball in beautiful, and you're not going to catch Smith. He's a real flyer. The sequence, they threw underneath Fisher twice. Then they spent the speed men out after it. And Robert Smith, fake short, broke long. And it was touchdown Hawkeyes. And here, the top-ranked team in the country has opened up a quick lead on Michigan State. Right off the bat, you were so correct about the win. Chuck Long had it at his back, and he went for the home run and connected against the Spartans, who had the choice. They could have taken the win here early. Well, he really took advantage of it, and he's got a lot of quarter left here. Ten minutes with the wind at his back. Johnson, the 10, the 15, out to the 24-yard line the Hawkeyes bring him down and it took long five plays to cover that distance now it's a double tight end they run away from the motion it's white and the Hawkeyes were there they did not yield a first down that is a very big defensive play Larry station 36 one of the first to step up in the hole and plug it Officials are calling timeout. I don't know whether they it's a referee's timeout or someone called timeout down here. Oh, Iowa called it. Wants to make sure they punt it into the wind, you see. 45 seconds left to go. That was a key play. If Michigan State gets the first down, they would be able to maintain possession and they would get the wind in the next quarter and kick down wind. Now they're going to have to kick the ball into the wind. Montgomery will punt into the wind. Not a good punt. Happel, however, lets it roll inside the 35 to about the 32 and 34 seconds to go here in the first quarter on that 38-yard punt with Oklahoma in high gear, even though they lost those tailbacks to Johnson. And the two who are tied, Pat Hayden's been bringing you highlights of that action. Oklahoma State mm, that's for a the fans full. And Michigan looking for four in a row. Chuck Long trying to quiet the crowd just a bit. The wave was beginning, and of course he's been calling so many plays at the line of scrimmage. He wants those wide receivers to hear him. He moves Helberson further outside. He's going to come in his direction underneath Rowe. And Rowe brings him down out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Now, one of the things that we might look later on in this game is a defense by Michigan State that might bait them into that out pattern and then roll up with a corner man to go for the interception. It's a coverage that they have used in the past. Clock is running down, closing seconds in the opening quarter here. And time has run out with Iowa leading by seven. And we're going to return after this commercial break and a word from your local station. Great to be a cheerleader when your football team is ranked number one. I'm Brett Musburger along with Eric Parsegan. We're in Iowa City, Iowa, and the Hawkeyes lead Michigan State seven to nothing. But Eric, you have to be impressed with what the Spartans have done so far. They had an excellent quarter. They maintained possession of the ball for 11 minutes, and I know George Perlis, if you did said told him earlier that they were going to have it for 11 minutes he'd been delighted but they gave the big play a 60 yard touchdown and that really hurt him that put him behind in the context here is Ronnie Harmon got to the short side of the field and gets Iowa a first down we just checked with the game officials and the Hawkeyes were officially charged with two timeouts in the opening quarter 
And I'm not so sure I would have used the second one with only 45 seconds to go, even though they wanted the win, Coach. Well, they wanted the win, but they also wanted to save as much time as they could on that 45-second clock so they would have the win when they got the ball. They were only able to get one playoff uh, to utilize it. Now they're going to be into the wind, although their field position is not too bad. Long will throw it on this underneath the Smith complete. And coming up was Crum to knock him down, number 35. And they'll come up with a third and about two, it looks like. Brent, they're picking this. They get the corner. He's soft. They just run the out pattern. Long just rolls left. Turn out right there. They've done this. It's Bobby Smith again. They're, they're so frightened now because Smith burned him with that 60 yard that, yard that you just replayed there. Coach, we can't say enough about the Hawkeye offensive line. Perlis's famed defense is not getting the penetration. They are not putting any pressure on Long. This time he will run, and Harmon jukes and gets free. He's at the 20. The great moves of Ronnie Harmon. <laughs> Ronnie Harmon, who broke his leg in two places late last season, is just now rounding into form. And today, Hayden said, I feel he'll run like the Harmon of old, showing you a move there as he just slips that leg past the would-be tackler. Those are things you can't coach. <laughs> You're right. That's what you'd like to recruit. All the coaches in America would like to have a back like Ronnie Harmon. Ball is down to the 18-yard line of the Spartans. First and 10. Long will throw it. Tight end flag is open. And he bullies his way to a touchdown. What a second effort. Phil Parker could not bring him down. through the season. Missing on that one. He did not kick in practice this week because of a slight injury and Hayden Fry was concerned about it. Number 86 is Mike Flagg. 6'6", 244 pounds. Phil Parker comes in here. Number 32. He can't get him down. About three or four other Michigan State Spartans get on him, but Flag carries him into the end zone. But keep in mind, he's no little fella. 6'6", 244. Flag has replaced Jonathan Hayes, who was drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. The Hawkeyes thought this might be a problem area. But Parker, who was all Big Ten, cannot wrap him up. The Hawkeyes have a tight end. Long is already 8 for 9 for 121 yards and two TDs. Not a bad afternoon. They look tough, don't they? Oh, they really do. That drive in particular, featuring Ronnie Harmon, who's a great runner in long farm, and then Flag all of a sudden comes into the picture. I didn't realize it until, I guess, Thursday when we came out here, how large that tight end is. He's a big man and strong. This is a tough period for Michigan State. George Perlis does not want to be down two touchdowns to Iowa. He must get something going right away. Countless Kicks it to the short man on the squib. And the Hawkeyes finally bring the tight end Bush roll down. Play fake. Goes for the home run. Ingram is open. He's got it inside the 10 yard line. Mark Ingram got behind the secondary. It's Ken Sims is the man that he beat. McAllister had great time. He put it up in the air and watched Ingram run on it. And Sims, number nine, was two steps short. Great throw, great catch, and a big play for Michigan, something they have not been getting. McAllister is having quite a day. The freshman from Pompano Beach, Florida. With the wind at his back, he just hit the veteran wideout Mark Ingram out of Northwestern High School in Flint, Michigan. 
And the Spartans with an opportunity to jump right back in this one. Double tight. Here's White trying to get outside, and he cannot get free. Hap Peterson, the nose guard, penetrated. Got a hold of him, and number 50 says you're going nowhere. Mitch Watchman, the number 62 of the Michigan State Center, has got his hands full with Peterson right there. He's come free. Watch right here, the center Watchman trying to block Peterson. He runs right through. He even tries to get help from Morris, number 21, but doesn't do it. And he makes the play on White. He's, a, he's given him a lot of problems in the running game. Almost botched up. McAllister keeps it like he's running an option, and he'll get strung out at the 15-yard line. Well, he decided to go with an option play, something that they hadn't shown, but the, the coordination is not good. He fakes to the fullback, and McAllister and Morris, number 21, he's not in the proper position to option him. He was behind him, so he couldn't throw the ball off. The timing was off. It probably would have been a pretty good play had Morris come in front of McAllister so he could deal the ball off. Chris Caudell will attempt a 32-yard field goal. Kick is on its way, and it's good. Michigan State is on the board. And that missed extra point looms large right now because Michigan State is down by 10 rather than 11. We'll be right back. Montgomery, the punter, will kick it off. Robert Smith and Ronnie Harmon are back at the goal line for the Hawkeyes. We've got 11.34 to go. The kickoff is going to be short. It'll be Harmon, 15, 20, 25, 30. Brought down finally at the 37-yard line. And it was Craig Johnson, number 28, one of the last men to have a shot at Harmon. Brought him down. Here is Harmon. Carefully following his blockers, looking for the daylight, and Kelly Quinn, number 93, who has been relatively quiet here this afternoon. Haight is doing a good job blocking on him. Getting excellent pass protection when Long goes back to throw. Michigan State has not been able to get anywhere near him. A, week, a year ago, when Long was hurt and had a bad knee and ankle, they were able to sack him two or three times, but they haven't been anywhere near this afternoon. Second and six. Other audible. Long is back. Incomplete. Well, a good defensive series for the Spartans, forcing a, a punt, because that's a dangerous offensive team with Long and Harmon and that group. Costrabala, left-footed punter. Not a real good punt. Downed inside the 40 at about the 37-yard line. First and 10. McAllister coming to the right. Big Jeff Cross got him out of the pocket. Throws back complete. Rising. He's got an alley in speed. Across the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10. Down to the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan State. A 50-yard touchdown by Michigan State. Off a roll to the right, McAllister throws back to the left, and the Hawkeyes have to know now they are in for a ball game here this afternoon. A quarterback has been discovered in Kinnick Stadium. <laughs> I said he may blossom today, and I guess he has. Certainly has in the first half here. He avoided the rush, scrambled, and threw the ball to the open receiver. Cadell to attempt the extra point. It's good. The top-ranked Hawkeyes are in for a dogfight. 
I think McAllister is seeing the field much better. Same bootleg pass. White going one way. McAllister coming the other. And he finds Ryzen right over the middle. Now watch. Ryzen does a great job of running against the grain of the defenders. He breaks to the left sideline, picks up a block. He's got excellent speed. And it's a 50-yard touchdown run as he comes down that left sideline before the Hawkeyes can get to him. Number 21, Mitchell almost gets it, but he doesn't. That block was thrown by Lorenzo White on Nate Creer, and that opened the way for the touchdown. So Bobby McAllister has completed 8 of 11 passes for 170 yards. He has just thrown a touchdown pass, and the Spartans trail the Hawkeyes by 3, 13-10. I think Mark I'd try to keep that ball away from Harmon if I, if I could. He almost popped it on that last kickoff got the wind with him he ought to be able to put the ball in the end zone sure let's kick it to Smith he's only scored a 60 yard <laughs> touchdown here this well, no, I said put the ball in the end zone no return <laughs> that's why you do that no he didn't do it oh yes he did Harmon will down it there and on the touchback it'll come out to the 20 yard line how about our quarterback comparison we've got one who's a Heisman Trophy candidate and the other who's an emerging freshman here well, the thing that's interesting about this is that Long was number one in the conference in most all the statistics. Bobby McAllister, I shouldn't say Bobby McAllister, but Michigan State was dead last in scoring offense, pass offense, and total offense. You know, how do you figure this game? Long to throw on first down. Good protection over the middle, complete to Helberson. Helberson out to the 37-yard line. A 16-yard gain by the Hawkeyes. And here's Chuck Long again, executing beautifully. He had beautiful time. Just fakes a sweep to the left. He waits, he waits, he waits. Finally, Halverson over the middle, wide open between the seams of the linebackers in a zone. And beautiful job of protection. If you give Long that kind of time, he's going to complete passes. I mean, all the way down the field. He cannot get that kind of time. 65, Tom Humphrey. Watch his guard. Look at his feet, how he positions them, balances, holds them off, and now they run Harmon. And he is checked out of bounds. Kelly Quinn, 93, was over there. He ran a long ways to get at him that time, showing you his speed. Here are the one man who has been open for Iowa here this afternoon. Whenever they want him is that tight end flag. He scored their touchdown when he held off about three would-be tacklers. They seem to be able to get him in the middle of this Michigan State defense to find a seam if they can. Long is straight back. And this time he will not get it off. He is sacked for the first time here this afternoon. John Jones got in and broke the tackle for the first time. The offensive protection did not hold up. Long went back, and one of the reasons was the secondary had covered flag. He was ready to go to him. He had to hold up, and that gave Jones just enough time to beat the block and get in on the tackle. Costrabala hits this one better than he's connected with any punt here this afternoon. Gets an Iowa roll, and it'll be out of bounds at the 19-yard line. 227 for McAllister, a 51-yard punt. And there is Dennison leading DePaul at the half, 14-7. Folks, to the best of my knowledge, that's the last of the big schools using the single wing. I'm sure that there are some Division Three teams using it. But Dennison scored 63 points last week. Now they lead here again this afternoon. Right on the draw. Daylight runs into his own man. Ricochets like a pinball in the other direction and gets out to the 45. Just a quick little draw to the inside, and when he finds daylight, he made 26 yards on that play. He was blocked well at the hole, but when he gets into that secondary, he wiggles all over the place. How'd you like to catch him? Look at the hole in there, beautifully blocked. When he pops through there, he's got all kinds of moves. You see the Hawkeyes trying to chase him down. He just runs all over the field. They took advantage of that Hawkeye pursuit, started a little misdirection and opened it up, and White did the rest, and now it's first and ten. Swing. Here's White. Gets to the 40. And Hap Peterson, number 50, coming from behind. Brought him down. He got to the 39-yard line. I don't think there's any need to kick it. There's 23 seconds left to go. I'd use the fourth down situation, try to get into field goal position. 
with an out pattern of some sort. 17 seconds. I wouldn't be afraid to surrender the ball at that field position with that time. They're letting the clock run down. Six, five, four, three, two. It has run down to one second, but one of the officials is signaling that McAllister did call a timeout. So they will spot the ball down on the 46-yard line. So it'll be a 56-yard attempt by Caudell. Chris Caudell, who has already connected on one field goal here from 32 yards and missed from 51 yards, will try his third field goal of the game. Well, he's got a chance there with uh, a little wind helping. Snap. The kick is up. And it's no good. The end of the first half, but better than you expected, right? The Spartans are hanging tough here in Iowa City. It's 13-10. We got one cooking. Iowa will kick it off, and Michigan State will work against the wind. They deferred, and it means that the Spartans will have the wind at their back for the final 15 minutes. It could be a very key factor. Outland is putting the ball on the tee for the Hawkeyes. Johnson back deep to return it here for the Spartans. More like a November afternoon than one in October in Iowa City. Gray sky here in the Midwest. To the short man. Picked up by Altabella. And he gets it back to the 28 yard line. How the quarterbacks made out in the first half. Bobby McAllister, the big story. And the two big running backs. Lorenzo White is out rushing Ronnie Harmon of Iowa. And the linebackers. Now McAllister back to work again. And here is White. White running behind the right side of that Michigan State offense. And again, Hap Peterson, number 50, so active, getting out there to help out. So we want to congratulate the Toronto Blue Jays, who have won the American League's Eastern Division 5-1 over the New York Yankees. But I imagine there were more than just a few nervous stomachs in the city of Toronto after what occurred last night. With the Jays allowing the Yankees to come from behind with two out in the ninth inning. But now it's over. And the Jays will go on to play either Kansas City or California for the American League Championship. Again, the tight end in motion. And they run White behind the motion man. Steps out of bounds. That's going to leave them about third and four. Devon Mitchell, 21, sealed it up that time. They're trying to get to the corner to the perimeter of the defense. That time Iowa supported well, although the linemen were blocked. Got a good game plan. Michigan State has come in here with an excellent game plan. Yeah, we'll see if they run White on one of those counter moves. Draw play here. They've also used McAllister on a roll very effectively. Comes to the left. Throws to the tight end. Trying to get the first down. Norvell had him wrapped up, and he got him out of bounds short of it. It's going to be an interesting call for George Perlis. He's looking at fourth down and about two from the 30. Well, I guess it's less than where he, to where he marks it. That's one. He's going for it. He's fourth and one. George Perlis has huddled with his offensive team. They'll go for the first down here, trailing by three. 13 minutes to go in the third quarter. I think. Play fake, roll right. First down. Slammed down hard inside the 25-yard line. Station got an arm in McAllister. Gets up a little slowly that time. 
Great call by Michigan State. Fake the ball to the inside. McAllister gets outside the containment. He's got a receiver open, but he is so wide open himself, he decides to run with the ball. Everybody took the fake to the inside, and he's clean down the sideline. They're putting a lot of pressure on that Iowa defense. Great call. Era again in that sequence. The tight end, Butch Roll, was wide open. If they want to come back with that look, they've got him as a receiver. This is first and 10 on the 23. Here comes White. Slashes inside. He's loose. Michigan State leads. A 23-yard touchdown run by Lorenzo White. Trailing 13 to nothing. Michigan State has come roaring back here to score two touchdowns and kick a field goal. They lead for the first time in this game, and there's the young man who got them in the end zone. Chris Caudell adds the extra point. Do you remember a year ago? Anytime you were ranked number one, you seem to lose the following Saturday. Look at Lorenzo White from the end zone. Get beautiful blocking. Split the seam right there. The formation is putting a lot of pressure on the Iowa defense. They're stretching it with a combination. Uh, two wide outs to the left and a wing to the right. And Iowa is not handling it well. Lorenzo White is running beautifully. John Wojciechowski, number 73, helped blow open that hole for the Spartans. And White said, we got it. We got the lead, but the Hawkeyes are dangerous. What a stunner unfolding here in Iowa City. Michigan State, an 18-point underdog, leading by four. Montgomery to kick it off for George Perlis. Keeps it on the ground. Goes all the way through to Harmon, who has trouble getting the handle at the 10. Running backwards. The Spartans in pursuit. They get him out at the 19-yard line. John Miller. First and 10. Ball on the 49-yard line. The fullback, Bush, straight ahead. They only use him to keep a defense honest. He's primarily a blocker. Timothy Moore, 42, the linebacker, coming up to swat him down. Now it's second and eight. 9.54. The crowd is quiet. They expected more from the Hawkeyes here this afternoon. Split backs this time. Got a blitz on. He still gets it off the Happel intercepted. He overthrew him. And Parker. But the ball is marked where his knee is down just inside the 30-yard line. Long's first interception and a big turnover. And the receiver was open as you watch here. Long just overshoots him. This is the first blitz that they put on that they're really getting near him right there. There's the throw. He just overthrows him right there. The defender covering was behind him. And, of course, Parker picks the ball off as a free safety. Just wait for it. Now, remember, Parker was burned earlier in this game when Flagg broke his tackle and battled into the end zone. This time, Parker prevails with the interception. First and ten. The ball is at the 40. Here's the young man who's authored this upset so far. Bobby McAllister out of the state of Florida. The redshirt freshman. He's got his tight end in motion. They'll run in that direction. And White's got another big hole. And the tight end did it again. Inside the 40 with Vino Belt, number 95, just blowing that corner open with that block. And they cannot solve that formation. You see the tight end lead blocks, and White has such great speed. He gets out of the contain here, turns into where the daylight is. You see Devon Mitchell trying to get there, the free safety, and he can't. And Sims finally brings him down, number nine, to save it from going for a score. 174 yards Lorenzo White has rushed for here this afternoon. Looking for daylight. Comes back into the heart of the defense. May have still gained a couple of yards. Jeff Drouse still there. 
I had seen some highlight film on him earlier, and I really liked White the way he ran. He, he's got great peripheral vision. He's able to read the defenders and always cuts to some kind of a daylight, and certainly we've seen him do it here this afternoon. He's a great running back. Second and eight for McAllister. Ingram is split to the left. He'll roll in that direction. He's got him inside the 25. Ingram is loose. Does not score as Nate Greer, with one hand on his jersey, kept him from getting into the end zone. But it was a 36-yard gain, and the Spartans are knocking on the door again. Blitzing the linebacker, there's no under, underneath coverage, and he's wide open. McAllister turns, he's got one-on-one, -on -one, no one in between to shelter it. Ingram catches the ball, and you see 29, Nate Greer trying to chase him down, finally pulls him down by the shirt, but there was no help on the inside. What so a great job by this offensive line. Man, Derek and Rogers and Watchman and Wojciechowski giving the young man time, and he drills his receiver. Here's first and goal. McAllister trying to follow his center, and he is stacked up. The heart of that defense, of course, would be number 50, Hap Peterson. Goal line with the tackles pinching in down there and coming underneath. Now it'll be second and goal. It looked as though only the center knew the snap count that time. And he tried to lead the way for the quarterback. Trying to sneak it in, try to get it in the easiest way, but Iowa was in there stacked and stopped the play. Wide side of the field would be to McAllister's right. And now he puts his wing back on that side. Here is White coming to the short side, touchdown. And George Perlis and the Spartans are authoring an upset. White has carried 32 times arrow for 177 yards. And this, and this is against a team that has led the Big Ten Conference in total defense three of the last four years, was leading the nation in rushing defense. This is just a pitch, but look at the hole. I think you and I could have gone through that one. Lorenzo found it easier than we would have, though. Cardell attempting the extra point. Bad snap, but they got it down in time, and it's good. Michigan State taking the lead, and we go one more time. Can the Hawkeyes solve Lorenzo White? They haven't here so far, and now the heat is on. We are back live, Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa, and Michigan State with a chance of upsetting the number one ranked team in the nation. Lorenzo White has done a job against Hayden Fry's defense here this afternoon. And in Champaign, upset. What a happy night in the Mike White household tonight as his son kicks a field goal to give the Illini victory over the Buckeyes of Ohio State. So the Big Ten gets underway and we could have a couple of upsets. Flag picking up that short kickoff and he is swarmed on by the Spartans. I mean they came battering after him. Arrow what do you see with this Iowa offense. They seem somewhat passive here. Well what happened. They, their running game has been sort of blunted. They've got to go to the air to, to play catch up. There's plenty of time, 21 minutes to go, and long is dangerous. He's got half full open. First down at the 39 yard line. Todd Crum, as you said, dangerous. You bet. The young man, Happel, who his father back in the 50s was a running back here for the Hawkeyes out of Cedar Rapids, showing you again why he gets so wide open. Putting a move and getting to the outside on Crum for the first down. First and ten. Long to put it up again. They'll set the screen, and here's Harmon. Daylight comes to the outside at the 20, the 15, inside the 10, and finally Parker gets him out of bounds. 
near the five-yard line. And the Hawkeyes now are storming back. A 37-yard gain. Perfect time for the screen. Michigan trying to rush the passer. Long looks away. Tries to look downfield, then dumps the ball off to Harmon here on the screen. He gets beautiful blocking downfield. Turns to the sideline. A great call by Iowa. Ronnie Harmon, who is backed up by his younger brother, Kevin Harmon. And, of course, Ronnie Harmon is trying to come back and be as impressive as Lorenzo White has been here today. From the eye. Harmon's the eye back. Comes out as a blocker. The pass to Smith. Touchdown, Iowa. Decision time for the Hawkeyes. Do they go for two? They have already missed one extra point. And their specialist has a tender leg. Aiden Fry must make a decision against George Perlis and Michigan State. Perlis is... Fake to Harmon. Under pressure. Throws it. He's got it in the end zone. Two points. Great throw under pressure. Watch the pressure that Long gets here. He still drops the ball in there. The receiver was covered. He hesitates. Then he puts it right there. Flag makes a great catch with a two-point play. Outstanding work. Johnny now, Miller, number three. Pull back to the three. Johnny Miller is trying to cover him, number 44, excuse me, Brett. But this is such a great play by Long. That's perfect. If it was a little shorter, a little longer, he never gets it. Watch his feet as Flag reached up, looked down to make sure that he was not out of the end zone. He's already scored a touchdown. Now he catches the two-point conversion. Hayden Fry will make a big change on his kickoff team. Marv Cook has teed the ball up. So that injury to Houtland has taken him off the field. And Cook kicks it to a short man at the 14. Altabelli trying to find an alley. He does. He is out to the 34. Callister rolling to the right. Throws on the run incomplete. He wanted Ingram. Era, because of McAllister's performance, I'm sure that the coaching staff has completely altered its game plan here this afternoon. Well, the McAllister is just reeking with confidence now. He knows that he can do it. The staff has confidence in him. They're not afraid to go ahead and throw the ball where they are here on the field. He has been able to do it. And look at the numbers right there. They tell a story. Third down and 18. There's a slot formation to the right. Tight end coming in motion. McAllister rolling in that direction, and Frost is on the pursuit. And he may have stepped out of bounds near the 20-yard line. The thing that really impressed me about the Hawkeye defense that time, Dross, number 76, who is six foot four, 207, um, 285 pounds, chased McAllister out of bounds. He looked like a back running over there. Era for the first time in this game, the Iowa defense has cut off the corners. Both those times when McAllister rolled left and roll right there was not that normal daylight that we've seen outside well they got themselves in the jam with that five yard penalty to start with where they had first and 15 rather than a positive gainer on the first play but they did cut the corners off fair catch by Happel good field position he had to punt that into the wind 
It was a 27-yard punt. Iowa can regain the lead. They're coming to back. There's a family that will stay on its feet for a while. Mother and father of the Iowa quarterback and one of his brothers, Andy Long, watching here. They have made the drive down from Wheaton, Illinois. Grandmother and grandfather, another son there. And that's what Chuck is doing here this afternoon. And this is his best starting field position of the game. He comes right back to Helverson, who's free. Down to the 25-yard line. Twenty-one yard gain. It's a simple out pattern. Halverson just turns out. The coverage is so deep. Number 35 is from misses it. Halverson puts a good move on him. He's really not that fast. He's like half of just a great journeyman. Does a great job. 444 left in the third. Halverson on the sideline as the plays are carried in by the wide receiver. Smith breaks from the right. Long looked at him. He was covered. So he goes to a secondary receiver. He drops it off to Craig Clark. Timothy Moore, the linebacker, working over there on that spot. Long's primary target was Robert Smith. He was covered going deep on the right side. Harmon and Helverson check into the game. Meanwhile, McAllister and the Spartan offense waiting to come back to work. Having a magnificent afternoon here this afternoon. Leading Iowa by three. Now on second and eight. Long with a deep drop. Still being pursued. Throws it to Ronnie Harmon. And he is out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Boy, that's a heck of a job by Long. That was a screen. They just let the defenders come. And they had it covered. Harmon finally broke away from it. Watch here. He's going to screen off to Harmon here to the right, to, to your left as you're looking at it. He pump fakes it. He sees it. He's open. Look at the lineman coming in on him. They've all been let free because of the screen. He avoids them. Throws the ball over to Harmon, who has broken away from his defender. And they finally run him out of bounds. That could have been a 15, 20 yard negative play. But Harmon and Long did a super job. Third and five. They run Harmon. Great play call. Shane Bullet tripped him up, but not before Harmon got the Hawkeyes the first down. Watch Harmon. Michigan State expecting Long to put the ball back in the air, and Bullet just getting a hand over in time, tripping him up, or he might have zipped into the end zone. 340 in the third. Iowa down by a field goal. Here's first down. Hudson is now the fullback. Number 20, David Hudson. Long rolling to the left. His receiver's covered on that side. He'll throw back for a touchdown to flag. And the Long family is overjoyed as their son has done it again. Too much time. That's the whole key to this play. Great throwback. 
by Long finding flag in the open. The receivers were covered, covered to the front side, but if there had been any pressure, he'd never had the time to throw it back. And the kickoff carries Johnson deep into the end zone. To the 20, the 25, out to the 27. Here's Lorenzo White. A hole for him. He's got a first down. Out close to the 40-yard <laughs> line. You know, Brent, with all the action that's going on in this game, and two great running backs, Lorenzo White picking up another first down. There hasn't been one fumble in this game with all the things that have been going on. <laughs> what, what, what a day. White countering back to the other side first down again for Michigan State that play is really hurt Iowa that little draw play McAllister dro starts to spin out like he's going to sprint out to throw the ball white just kind of hides back in there and picks a daylight you see right here little sneak draw runs against the grade and station this time can't get to him almost does white's tough to get a hold of he's a heck of a runner that play has gained an awful lot of yardage for him. It really puts a pressure on that interior. We're talking about a doubleheader in two weeks. I think we've had one here today. <laughs> <laughs> but time running out here in the quarter. We'll return after this commercial break and a word from your local stations. Here's the first play of the final 15 minutes. Iowa with the lead, Michigan State with the ball, trailing by four. And you know who's coming at him, Lorenzo White. And he's got another first down. Bangs down close to the 40-yard line. Three yards and a cloud of dust, no more in the Big Ten. Coach, how many yards have we got here this afternoon? Brent, these are two great defensive teams like we called it at the top <laughs> of the show. They've made 800 and how many yards? Lorenzo White has 226. And between the two teams, they've made over 200 and 825 yards. So what can we expect here in the fourth quarter? A little defense? <laughs> no, but I'll the advantage now goes to Michigan State. They have the win. It's not quite blowing as hard as it did earlier, but it is favoring them. White is out. Craig Johnson, the backup tailback, has the ball right there and a hole, and apparently it doesn't make any difference which one of the tailbacks carries the ball. He gets down to the 26-yard line for Michigan State. I asked George Perlis how much drop-off there would be if Johnson had to come in if something happened to Lorenzo because he looked like the franchise coming in here. He was making all the yardage. He says not that much. He's just as strong and powerful. He probably is not quite as elusive. And a first down for the Spartans at the 26. And young McAllister has done such an effective job of leading this team. Here's the draw with Johnson. Johnson breaks a tackle. Gets to the 25-yard line. Devon Mitchell and Nate Career. Going to wind up with about third and four. This has been a drive of third down successes by the Spartans. Perlis going with his backup tailback as Lorenzo White is shaken up. Another draw with Johnson. First down. Turns the corner and he's got a touchdown. Michigan State has scored with 4.06 to go on a 25-yard run by backup Craig Johnson. Great job here, Era, by oh. Michigan State on that offensive line. 
You know, I, I thought McAllister still had the ball. He really deceptively handed that ball to Johnson. For a minute there, I thought McAllister was coming because they were blitzing from the backside. Perfectly executed play, beautifully executed. Kick is up. Now, it's 31-28. Watch a great blocking on the seal blocking from the left side. They really, you see the pursuer coming. He slips the ball in there, and then Johnson cuts clear across the grain and out races the defensive secondary. Number nine, Sims, cannot get to him. Johnson's got good speed. Touchdown. And the right side of that offensive line did its job again. Iowa ranked number one four minutes away from being upset here this afternoon. Chuck Long has already tossed four touchdown passes. It's 31 28. There was the scoring drive that put the Spartans back into the lead with the backup tailback scoring from 25 yards out. The punter Montgomery has it teed up and kicks it off. Fielded at about the five by Harmon. Looking for daylight, brought down near the 22-yard line. And it was that line blocking that did the job. Watch the left side to the left of McAllister. Vries, number 57, the defensive right tackle, is just wiped out there by Mandrick. He's veering to the field. And here goes Johnson cutting back. Sims, number nine, will come into your picture here as he tries to catch him. Too late because the flow he was going the other way. Touchdown. Michigan State leads 31-28. There's the man that could make the difference, number 16, Chuck Long. With only a fullback behind him. They send four receivers out. They hit Helverson. First down, Hawkeyes. At 3.56, the clock stops. 3.48. And again, the fullback is the lone setback behind Long. Chuck escapes, gets it off to his tight end, Mike Flagg, who is brought down near the line of scrimmage. Long just did not have the time to hunt up his receivers, get a lot of pressure in there. David Wolf. I don't blame McAllister for wanting to say hello to his mom, his pop, and everybody else <laughs> down in Florida for the job he's done here this afternoon. He got good reason to smile. <laughs> he didn't just blossom. He's in full bloom. <laughs> <laughs> I was never so surprised in my life as I have been by this performance here this afternoon. Second and nine. Long, drilling it again to Halverson. Crum working him on the sideline. Short of the first down. The coverage was excellent, but Long put it right to Helverson. Watch from the end zone here. Watch that ball just beyond the defender and right into Helverson's hands for about eight or nine yards. It's going one. Third down. to the 45 for a first down for the Hawkeyes. You know, with 2.11 to go, we've got a three-point ball game here. It's 31 to 28. Now, ordinarily, you would say, well, kick a field goal and take a tie, and it won't hurt you that badly. But Hayden Fry told us yesterday, if this situation arose, he said, I was raised poor. I'd go for the win. So here he comes now. He's got to get 55 yards in 2 minutes and 11 seconds. Stop the clock again, picked up nine yards. It's one thing about this Iowa team, they can pick off yardage very quickly. With 
155 to go. I'm Brent Musburger along with Eric Parsegan. The number one ranked Iowa Hawkeyes are losing by three with a minute 55 to go in this game. But they are on the move, being led by Chuck Long. Over the middle for Harmon, incomplete. He overthrew him that time inside the 30-yard line. Well, he had him open, too. He just dropped it in there. Remember, Harmon was a wide receiver before he was switched to tailback by Iowa last year. They bring him out of the wingback position, keeping only the fullback home. Send him over the middle, and the pass was high. Long is now 28 for 37 for 348 yards and four touchdowns, but he has two interceptions. Here's third and two. Here's Harmon trying to get outside. Cuts back. First down. The clock will stop at 144. Good running by Harmon. He was cut off at the pass. He had to turn it back to the inside. He did it. Got to the inside. There's Hayden. He wants a timeout. That will be the first one in the second half. So he still has two. Plenty of time. Chuck Long comes over to the side. He'll confer with his head coach. And we'll be right back. We are back. Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa. One minute and 44 seconds remaining. The Hawkeyes trailing by three. And they must negotiate 43 yards to get the touchdown that would put them back in front. That number one ranking and everything else on the line right now for Hayden Fry and his coaching staff. And, Eric, you really cannot say enough about the job that George Furless and his staff has accomplished here with a backup quarterback in a few short weeks. We've had a beautiful game plan against the Hawkeye defense. You know, you're talking about one of the best defenses in the nation, and you're in and you're out. It's been that way. But here we go with 144 left. Long to throw it on first down. Pumps comes to Happel. He's got it and out of bounds. Inside the 25. Boy, that Happel is really something. Number 40 here on the right side of your screen. He comes down, puts a move on to the inside, breaks away from him, long puts it here, right there, right in his hands. 35, Todd Crum was protecting the inside of the post, but they took the out and down to the 23-yard line, Brent. You and I sure get bad games, Coach. Oh, wow. <laughs> We've had some dandies. Last week, it was Texas Stanford. Before that, Georgia Clemson. And it was Michigan upsetting Notre Dame and triggering its fine season. Here it's I. Trying to come back. Now Long will utilize a timeout. And there's a penalty flag being thrown by one of the officials. There's a penalty flag at the 10 yard line. Timeout was called by the quarterback. So we'll straighten out the penalty and the timeout situation and we'll be right back in a moment. Era, the official who threw the flag, did not realize that Chuck Long had already called timeout. The 25-second clock was just ready to zero out when he called the time. So there's no penalty. We've got a first and ten. The ball is at the Michigan State 23-yard line and here come the Hawkeyes. Good protection. Helverson's wide open. Another first down, close to the 10 yard line. He's out of bounds at the 11. Those two wideouts, Happel and Helverson, have been tremendous. You see, Helverson comes up the field and breaks away. He's wide open there. Number 18, Ron Rowe, cannot get to him. And Long is putting it in there. All right, now it's at the 11. With one and a half minutes to go, plenty of time. The mark of a great team is one that can come back with time running out. We're about to find out if Iowa deserves its number one ranking. Chuck Long has got the Hawkeyes, first and 10 at the 11. He'll run Harmon up the middle, jukes outside, hits the four-yard line. The clock winding down toward the one minute and 10 second mark. Michigan State had a blitz on that time from the wide side of the field. That was a good call by 
the Hawkeyes, they probably will wind up with single coverage, and I don't think anybody can stop Long and his receivers on one-on-one -on -one down here. Hayden Five pulls the wide receivers out. Double tight end formation. It's the power eye for Iowa. Hudson is number 20 in motion. They come to Harmon behind the motion. Harmon dives in his stop, pushed out of bounds by the Spartan defense. Todd Crum, 35, along with 18. Ronald Rowe right there on the tackle. Clock running again. It's not stopped. They try to get outside to the right side with Harmon. Looks like he has a little leverage there, but Harmon is tripped up there by number 35, who is Todd Crum. He does a great job. We've got timeout. We're going to go away briefly, and we'll be right back. 31 seconds left here in Iowa City. It's 31-28. Michigan State trying to hold on, but the Hawkeyes are inside the five. And remember, they can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. If they get to the one-yard line against George Perlis and this Spartan defense, they would get a first down. 31 seconds for Hayden Fry and the Hawkeye offense. Chuck Long delivering the play in the huddle. He should have two plays called in the huddle if he attempts to run the ball because it's just 31 seconds. A first down would stop the clock to move the chain. Just it wouldn't take very long, though. They've got to have two plays here if he doesn't get it on this one. Also, let's see what kind of deployment Michigan State has defensively. This is so similar to a year ago when Iowa failed on a two-point conversion. Here they are needing the touchdown. Long has got it. He'll walk in. He faked to Harmon and kept it. Chuck Long. And he knows right now, I've got it. And over on the sideline, the man who put together this football power. And when you're number one, that's what you're supposed to do. Well, it's been a tremendous comeback. They walked into a buzzsaw against Michigan State, passing and running in the over. It, well, they still got, what, 27 seconds left. Anything could happen. That was a great camera shot of young McAllister. What did he do? He grabbed his helmet, and he said, let's go back. Here's the lateral now on the kickoff. And Michigan State has got the ball out to the 38-yard line with 20 seconds and a couple of deep receivers who can fly. McAllister. No timeouts. Rising to his left. Ingram to his right. Three man rush. Straight back. Comes out to Ingram. First down. 14 seconds, and he's down to the 45 yard line. No they'll move but... the chains, no timeouts, so they'll come up now with the quick huddle, a 16-yard gain. McAllister 
Sending information to another freshman. Rising. Now he tells everybody what he's got. Morris is the fullback in the slot. McAllister rolls to the right. He should get out of bounds. He almost turned it back inside and gained a few more yards, but he realized, I can't stop the clock. He's got three seconds. He must throw the ball down into the end zone and get something going. Well, just the point that you have made, if there is interference, it still doesn't come out to that one-yard line. It's only a 15-yard penalty with an automatic first down. Well, it's been a valiant effort on the part of Michigan State if they don't get this one in with three seconds left. Willie Boyer as they send trips. It's Big Ben left for Michigan State. McAllister will heave it in their direction. It goes down toward the end zone. Ball is batted in the air, but can't be caught. Iowa prevails, but they know they've been in a football game. the players out there shaking hands with each other because both teams played so superbly. I thought that was terrific, the teams greeting one another. As Chuck Long, who had thrown for four touchdowns, fakes to Ronnie Harmon, keeps it on the bootleg, and in victory raises high the football. We'll return after these messages from your local station.